Chris. Uh, it's a little late. It's like three in the morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, doing some. Uh... Oh, this is mirrored, huh? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can fix that. Well, project for later. Anyway, um, this is my third year in Nanorimo. My name's Alex or Alex. Uh, uh, just uh, some thoughts. Uh, I, I'm gonna start a, a forum thread on the Nanorimo forums. It's uh, basically, uh, you know, I don't know if you if, if if this might help with your novel or uh, if you you know it might spur some kind of interest. But um, basically, trying to open up the uh, the topic of immortal characters. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've read many books about it. I I actually can't really think of any. Uh, I was thinking of Tuck Everlasting. You know, they're immortal. Uh, I was thinking of Aladdin from. Disney's Aladdin, uh, I mean, uh, the genie, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I was just, uh, <laughs> going through a phase where I was watching through a lot of Robin Williams movies recently, because of what happened, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, he's immortal, uh, <laughs> and, you know, basically there's some things that, uh, I, I was coming up with in my notes, so because my character is immortal, and it's kind of like a, a story where, uh, uh, you know, she finds out that she's not the only one, and, uh, you know, there's, you know, lots of, you know, world discovery and clashing, you know, people are like, you know, different values and different skill sets, and, uh, you know, there's a wacky, sassy robot, <laughs> and all that steampunk, uh, I'm kind of exploring that genre right now, uh, uh, you know, kind of fantasy, kind of western, but also modern, kind of like how, um, I don't know if you've heard of Naruto, how it's like ninjas, like old school Japanese, but it, you know, every now and then you see like a TV or like a computer or something, and it's like, it kind of hints like, you know, there's a modern aspect to it that is like, as well, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but you know, there's, you know, email and, you know, she has a robot, but you know, everything's going to be steampunky, you know, there's going to be steam and metal, lots of metal and trains, I mean, the, my first chapter is a train robbery, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, my character's a bounty hunter, so, you know, uh, and she's immortal, you know, that's how she makes her living, she does it because it's really easy for her, you know, but, you know, basically, the whole thing is, you know, what is the implication of being immortal, that's really the thing, you know, because we, as mortals, we think about it, we think, you know, it'd be cool to be immortal, wouldn't it, you know, but, you know, if you think about it, it, it could, you know, there's a thing, you know, it could be a curse, but then again, it might just be really boring, <laughs> you know, it, it's not really a curse, it's not really a good thing, it's just, it is what it is, you know, it's like, um, I think Tolkien, uh, I was, uh, I read The Silmarillion, but I also read, uh, it's, it's mirrored right now, but Unfinished Tales, uh, I haven't finished it, <laughs> go figure, um, but, uh, you know, he was talking about how, uh, at one point, in one, in one of his, uh, notes, uh, <laughs> note stories, n Norris, <laughs> um, one of his note stories, he was talking about how elves and humans are, you know, completely different, you know, elves are, they live until the end of Arda, the end, until the end of, Arda, of, of, of the, of the, the world that Middle Earth is in, called Arda, uh, you know, they live until the end of time. And, uh, the, the key difference in why humans are the way they are is because they live, I think he uses words like, you know, they're like, they're like a flame that burns out really quickly. And so that's why human, and they say, well, they say man, I think, uh, you know, they live the way they do. They, you know, they, they live for a short time, so they want to, you know, grab life while they can, you know. <laughs> and, uh, the thing is, you know, it's like, what is that really, so, you know, I, I said note, um, uh, you know, one implication of is, uh, is that being immortal means that you'll have a lot of time to work on skills, so part of my, the quirks of my story that, um, it might help me reach that 50,000 is, uh, my characters who are immortal all have some kind of quirk, you know, they have some kind of, like, really like, develop skill, like, my main character, you know, she's, you know, an, an inventor, a mechanic, I, I'm kind of thinking of, like, uh, Winry from Full Metal Alchemist, <laughs> but, you know, she's, like, that kind of person, and she, you know, she's a programmer, you know, and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, she invented a robot, and, and the robot feels pain, and so he's always complaining about things, <laughs> and, you know, so, like, uh, 
his name's Wedge. I, I don't know if that's a little cliche. I, all, all my characters are kind of cliches. I'm not really worrying about it. You know, like, you know, my, uh, the, the robot who's a sassy robot, his name's Wedge. And then, you know, I got uh, some, some uh, band of misfit outlaws named Soap Pots and Kettle. <laughs> and, you know, there's another immortal named Nocturne. You know, it's all going to be really silly, kind of steampunky, kind of fantasy stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of laughing at it, but, you know, it's whatever helps. You know, I, I need to stop taking myself so seriously, really. You know, you need to get over that and just get, get that word count. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, uh, there's going to be characters that have may have some kind of... Uh, you know, they live so long, they're going to have some kind of past, but people, the thing is, the only people who are going to remember that past are the other immortals, and so, you know, like, <laughs> you know, people are going to die, and, and so they're going to change, they, they're going to have, like, they're basically going to get a second chance, or third, or fourth, or fifth, <laughs> and so it's like, uh, you know, like, uh, my main character, she ends up being, like, a former leader of some kind of uh, opposing clan, and there's going to be, like, lots of clans and colonies, and and stuff, and there's a war, and it's kind of, I don't know if it's post-apocalyptic, but, uh, kind of dystopian kind of thing going on, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to really follow that, but, you know, they're basically food is a big thing, and, you know, people try to steal transports with food, and, you know, that, that's, that's what the beginning is, but, you know, um, you know, like, what kind of skills would immortals have, and, uh, you know, it, it uh, you know, I, I could invite, you know, anybody who's watching this and in, in the forum you know like uh, if, if you're working on a story that has immortals you know what have what you know we can compare notes you know uh, uh, I might be able to help and you might be able to help that's 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 always it's always supposed to be collaborative right uh, but you know it's a I think I think writing is all about opening up a can of worms in our own brain you know we have to we have to like read things that trigger things in our brain that say like let's wrap our head around this idea, you know, like, <laughs> like, uh, I, like, my, if I'm gonna use that as a subject for my novel, you know, I'm gonna have to be answering this question about my characters, you know, I'm supposed to be, uh, I think Brandon Sanderson, uh, I've never really read any of his books, but I was watching his YouTube, uh, series, it was, like, writing about dragons, uh, Brandon, uh, Brandon Sanderson, he said, uh, I have it written down right here. It says, uh, I, I made several notes about it. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that was about magic. Uh, <laughs> uh, it said, I have it here, I know that. <laughs> um, Alright, world building. It's uh, making promises to your reader and then fulfilling those promises. So basically, you know, like, if I write something about a character and, you know, it sparks some interest, you know, like, uh, about that character, I'm gonna have to answer it you know, later. I'm not just gonna, like, say, uh, this character invents robots and then never deal with that, you know, like... <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something. I'm gonna have to like, you know, there has to be a robot if I mention robots. And if there's a robot, there maybe there's other robots. It, you know, there's a whole can of worms that's being opened if you're opening something. Otherwise, you shouldn't even open it, right? I mean, like, why why mention that there's gonna be, you know, a, a soccer tournament or something, and then never show it? You know, it's like, you know, it, it's you know, I think that's the problem is um, a lot of the times we as writers we we want to. We want to just keep things moving, but at the cost of putting meaningless details down. And I think that's an issue that we. And also, the other the, on the other spectrum, we we kind of try too hard not to do that, and so then we get stuck with a low word count for a while, and then you kind of go get anywhere. Like my last years was only got to seven thousand, and I'm you know I put it back on the back burner because it's kind of an ambitious project, but. Uh, you know, I'll eventually, you know, work on it again. Uh, this year, uh, my focus is on finishing. That's, I don't really care about how it looks or how it reads. I'm really just focused on getting to the 50,000 word count. And, you know, uh, 
I, in order to fill that in, I'm going to have to answer a lot of questions about this um, this plot device because you know immortal characters. I mean, uh, for all we, I mean, as far as I know, uh, immortals don't exist, and, <laughs> and I say that as far as I know. You know, it's like, hmm, <laughs> do immortals? Am, am I immortal? <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, I don't want to try to prove that. Uh, <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, Oh, my teeth are a little brown, huh? That's, uh, Lots of coffee. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, uh... You know, uh... You know, there might be a plot device with immortals such as... Uh, you know, what do you do about young immortals? You know, like, you know... If you're old, you know, you, you're probably gonna get bored of doing all the stuff, like, trying to get like, uh, too much power, or money, or fame, or, or all that kind of stuff, and you're probably going to get really bored with that, like, there's going to be a, a character in my story who just plays, uh, you know, a game like, uh, Shogi, or chess, uh, it's going to be some kind of chess, it might even just be chess, I, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a character that just, you know, all he does is just, he sits at a board, and, and just, like, you know, he's been working on it for, like, a thousand years, or something, <laughs> and he's been, like, you know, uh, uh, I've been I've been playing this this one game for a thousand years or something, <laughs> or you know, not maybe just not one game, but like he, he, there, there maybe there's gonna be a second immortal that's like always telling him to hurry up or something, you know? Like uh, now, now I'm coming up with more and more ideas, who knows? Uh, but yeah, um, what does this do? Is this like some kind of focus uh, and discovering things? This is uh, this is amazing. <laughs> This is totally amazing, amazing. Anyway, um, you know, like, uh, it reminds me of another thing, uh, quirks about, you know, um, the way, uh, the characters talk and stuff. Anyway, um, you know, how do they deal with, uh, younger mortals? Anyway, you know, I just thought I'd throw it out there, uh, you know, uh, what are the implications of being immortal? Uh, looking forward to hearing your, uh, comments and discussion. Thank you.